This series is the story of the new amphibious Arctic vehicle project named Bernard. Building on ideas, skills and questions raised during the Allen lifeboat conversion, as a team we will share all those moments needed to get Bernard up north, onto the ice and making himself useful. People of the channel, you deserve an update today. And I have laid down some gardener's weed mesh. Not because I have an aversion to unauthorised plant life, but rather because I want a neat underlay for the vehicle mould making area that allows water to drain through. However, forget about that for a moment. Time for the largest scale grinding I have the facilities to provide for you. Somehow I did end up in possession of the steel box section I ordered from Brundles, since despite calling me to check delivery details, they dumped it by the side of a public road and drove off. Luckily, the people of the island didn't fancy pinching my metal, and only the drizzly weather gave us a light layer of surface rust. Nothing that can't be solved later with a wire brush and coat of paint. After considering a dozen ways to do this, I settled on what you're about to enjoy, for the robust base frame for the Bernard mould. Strong, not too pricey, easy to make square and true, and possible to edit and disassemble fairly easily. I need to cut the two long side lengths, at exactly 5 metres each, and then a whole load of crossbars to make a consistent 2 metre width. Remember, the resulting shell needs to fit into a shipping container. Good, let's get cutting. I've actually done a bit of refurb on the metal cutter using some rust converter, re-greasing the hinges and beefing up the power cable entry. Nothing less for this workhorse of the channel and something of an apology as it had to live outdoors when up near Edinburgh the winter before last with Alan the lifeboat. I took the two long ones over to check I wasn't making any elementary errors. Nope, we're only going for complex errors this episode. See if you can spot any. Now for the crossbars and the normal twice measure cut once principle. They are 40 mil square sections and so the crossbars need to be 192 centimeters wide. That was serious work, so a momentary stop for a steak panini, a delicious garlic and herb seasoning, and then the little workshop cooking rig I've made, since I predict some long days and evenings ahead this spring and summer. It's one of the gas burners that AppKit made and I bought years ago. No idea if they still sell this particular one, but I like it. We have fire and time to grease the hyperlight titanium pan and get that steak in there. Thin titanium pans heat up fast but also cool down fast, so you need to control the power setting with culinary artistry of the sort only I can provide in a boatyard in front of a small tractor and a telehandler. A slight sticking, but once the steak fat joins the party we're looking good. Steak out to rest and not overcook. Panini in to mop up those juices and crisp up. Steak sliced and checked to make sure that we got the medium rare spot on. A little sauce, some green stuff to make it instantly healthy and that's my post steel grinding session meal done. Quick recap, I cleared and flattened the spare ground allotted to my project by the ever patient yard manager and got the mesh down, plus some rubber matting for walking on. Also a temporary tarp, measured and prepared to look after this build in the meantime before I have time to construct the proper shelter. I'm laying out the steel roughly in the configuration I want. There will be more of those towards the front end, as there will be more shaped form boards there to define the detailed vehicle contours, whereas the rest of the body will be more uniform. My drill press has been mobilised for immediate action, and I've also raided my nut, bolt and washer collection for M10 fixings. The majority of these are from the storage racking structure that used to dominate the interior of Alan's cabin. I also need right angle braces for the steel base. These are cheap and cheerful galvanised ones. These should allow me to easily, accurately, quickly and reversibly put together a properly squared frame. I just need to do all the measuring, offering up, marking, checking and prepping before the drilling starts. I was a little cheeky to start with and saw whether I could get away with a single 10mm hole drilled into the marked up steel. Sadly the tip skipped around a bit and I decided to be sensible and grown up instead. In my world that means using a centre punch, then a little hole drilled with a hand drill to avoid having to keep changing bits in the press. This allowed the 10mm bit to whiten it out to the proper size in the proper place and to finally bore through the other side of the box section. Excellent, well done us. And having repeated that many, many times with lots of bolting on of angle braces, we have progress. And just to please those of you who need two different types of grinder in every episode, I use the mini one to clean up the ends and deburr the holes instead of using a countersink bit. I even used my foot, which is an internationally recognised unit of measurement for lifting the frame to the right height to tighten up all those brackets. This really is as good as it gets, isn't it? I even managed to confirm the majestic squareness of the whole thing with what I hear is formally known as a framing square, which does make sense. Lots and lots more of that, and I got to the stage where I wanted to elevate things in general, and literally. 
The corners are having adjustable steel screw stands, which promise me that they are of very high capacity, and then I have a load of cheaper plastic ones to support all the intermediate areas. There's a reason to raise the frame up, apart from allowing airflow and stopping the steel from getting damp on the ground. I'm thinking ahead a long way to when we're making our composite parts, and when we may need to seal the perimeter. More on that much later. I'm now checking it's uniformly 2 meters wide, as I didn't trust the steel supplier to give me perfectly straight stock. It slightly bows out in the middle, but we can close that up by using the cross beams. I was right to be suspicious, a very slight bowing in the long sections. To make sure the cross beams do their job, I first decided to use a ratchet strap on the middle to correct that bowing, and so we measure 200 centimeters across the whole length. Now, for all those cross beams, we can't be quite as efficient as I can't use the drill press, but good sharp bits do make short work of basic mild steel. Yes, I could have done all the marking up and then pre-drilled before assembly, but experience tells me that Bernard. just tends to happen, and you end up with them in the slightly wrong place or need to compensate for something else. So, drilling as we go along will minimise assorted frustration and fury. Very good. Deburred, and the bracket fits on nicely. I'm going to have one bracket one side and one the other for most of the beams, so they can't rotate, given I'm only single bolting these ones to save time. But there's not much space for this one near the end, so I may possibly need to double bolt those two brackets later on. I did that a lot more, as long as the light lasted in fact, but not to completion. No matter, the rest is repetition, and the next time you see this project those will all be done, and we can get on with the next steps. The shelter, the custom cut former shapes, and then we can reinforce, pack out, skin, and finish the mould. Until then, all we need from you please is good-natured, constructive abuse in the comment section. Bye.